Detroit, Michigan, and I got in late last night, and we're here for the Detroit Free Press Marathon. I'm here running with Bib Brave, so I will be reviewing this race. I did receive a free entry uh, in exchange for a review for this race, but I'm really excited because I've been wanting to run this race for a really long time. Um, basically, like as I started researching uh, races across the United States during my 50 states journey. Um, this one really stood out to me for Michigan. This one's really cool because we're in Detroit and if you know anything about like kind of the geography of uh, the upper United States and Canada and where uh, the border kind of intersects, um, the Detroit is right next to, it's like right across a little river from Canada, from Windsor, Canada in Ontario. Um, I wonder if I'll be able to see it today. It's kind of like gloomy out today and raining. Uh, I don't really know. I haven't gotten my bearings yet. The sun, <laughs> I, I came in, like I said, late last night, uh, and it was dark. So, um, but today we're going to go out and explore a little bit. So I'll be able to figure out which direction is Canada and which direction is uh, the southern part of the United States. <laughs> but we are right next to Canada while we're in Detroit. Um, and this race is cool because we do get to cross the border during the race into Canada. Um, I believe it's around the three mile mark of the marathon and there's also a half marathon and they have two half marathons. There's an international half marathon that crosses the border and a US only half marathon that stays in the United States. So the international half and the full marathon does cross the border into Canada around mile three. Um, and then I believe we are in Canada for about three miles and then we cross back into the United States, I think around mile six or seven. So it's only a couple of miles, but it is really unique that you get to cross the border into another country. Um, I've never run a race in another country, so this will be my first time running a portion of a race in another country, so that'll be really fun. Big question that I get is like, how does that all work? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I have my passport here with me, um, and you had to have a valid passport to register for the full marathon or the international half marathon. So um, <laughs> funny story is that my passport my like old passport expired back in like, I think March of 2020. And at that time, we all know what was going on in March of 2020, right? The world was shutting down. Uh, so I didn't end up re uh, renewing it. I didn't have any plans to travel internationally. And then I just kind of put it off for years because I, again, like didn't have any urgency to, to renew it. Um, so I did have to, in the spring, I renewed my passport so I could register for this race. Um, so they do take all of your passport information when you register, you have to have a valid passport so that you can make the border crossing. The international full marathon and the international half marathon uh, registration closed in mid September. I think it closed on the 13th of September. So a month ago. And I believe what they do is they submit the, the list of runners that will be, you know, making the border crossings uh, with their passport information to border patrol on both sides. So everybody knows who's coming and entering into their country and who's coming back into the US. I'm sure that our bibs are tracked when we enter into the country. Um, and I'm sure that they, if there is an issue and somebody doesn't return back into the United States that like, people are gonna be aware of that. So I'm very intrigued. We do have to carry our passport with us when we are running. So I'm like a little concerned. I just hope I don't drop this like while I'm reaching for a goo or something. I am very fascinated to see 
uh, how the border crossings will work uh, when we do get to the Canadian border tomorrow. I'll be showing you guys how it all works and kind of talking about it as well. Anywho, um, like I said, it's Saturday. Uh, I got in last night um, and I'm in this really cool Airbnb. I'll kind of like show you around a little bit, but I'm not far from where the expo is taking place. Uh, I think it's called Huntington Place is the expo hall. So uh, we're doing the expo today. I'm actually meeting up with a Ren Disney friend, Steph. Hey, Steph. Um, we're gonna go grab some brunch in a little bit and then we're gonna go hit the expo together, do some shopping, pick up our bibs. And then later today, we are going to go see Martinez Evans speak over at Wayne State University. Uh, he is the founder of the Slow AF Run Club um, on Instagram. So go ahead and check out all of his stuff because his story is really inspiring. I believe the Detroit Free Press Marathon was his first marathon, which is really exciting. So I'm interested to kind of hear his story. I'm sure like he, he's probably aware of the race is in town and that runners are coming to see him. Um, so it'd be interesting to kind of hear his story a little bit. Um, I listened to him on the Rise and Red podcast and his story is just really inspiring. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And shout out to Steph for finding the that Martinez is gonna be in town today. Um, so that we could go together. So we're gonna spend the day together. It's gonna be really fun. Like I said, it's kind of rainy today, um, but that's okay. Uh, I think the weather tomorrow is supposed to be cloudy and dry. So we're just kind of hoping that all the rain gets out of its system uh, today. <laughs> and so we'll have a nice dry race tomorrow. I don't mind if it's cloudy, um, but as long as it's not raining. I feel like I've had a string of really rainy races. Ever since, if you go back into my, my vlog, like of my 50 states recently, Atlantic City was rainy, but like mostly like extremely windy. Mississippi Gulf Coast was a washout. <laughs> and then Boston was also, it was not like, it was kind of cloudy um, and a little bit rainy here and there, but it's just like, I haven't had like a nice weather, like marathon in my 50 states journey since Chicago of 2022. So it's been a while. I'm like hoping that tomorrow is like gonna be a nice day, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna be taking you guys along with me uh, today um, while I hang out with Steph, while we go get breakfast, hit the expo and go see Martinez. And then later today, I think I'm just gonna try to keep it chill, get ready for the race um, and just enjoy myself here in Detroit. This is my first time in Detroit. Um, I've had a layover here a couple of times, but first time in Detroit in the city, so that's going to be fun. So let's go check out Detroit. Oh, I also want to show you my Airbnb because it is really cool. So let me take you around. All right, so here's the front door. Here, let me turn some lights on. Here's the front door. Um, this is just a coat closet immediately to your right. Nothing in here. And then this is the main drag. We got some uh, coat racks. Here's the bathroom. Hello, hello. Nice big shower. And then you keep going in. And there is a washer dryer here, which is awesome. I think the intention of this building is um, kind of more long-term stays. So it's like apartment style living. And so if you are here for a longer period of time, you have a washer dryer, they do provide laundry pods, which is nice. This is just a door to close that if you'd like. You have another coat closet, you have a full length mirror, and then here's the main room. So it's kind of like a studio apartment, which I always picture like if I were to ever live in a large city, like this would be the vibe that I would want. It's kind of like loft style, apartment style, which is really nice. So you have a nice little sitting area here, uh, queen size bed. Uh, we have a kitchen. This is a full kitchen, which is really nice. Brett is like, I drive him crazy because I never like close all of the stuff all the way in the kitchen. So that was just a prime example. <laughs> Um, but yeah, full-size kitchen, uh, which is really nice. Nice little island and like seating area. This is where I was uh, talking to you from before. Um, TV. And then the coolest part is this awesome view. Um, like I'm kind of right in the heart of it, pretty much, of Detroit. Obviously, I haven't done it too much 
uh, walking around exploring yet, but um, this view is just awesome. These nice big windows, and it was really nice. You saw it at nighttime when I walked in, but nice big windows. And the cool part is I am very, very close to pretty much everything. I think I am, I'm definitely within walking distance of the expo and of the start and finish line. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, I'm in walking distance of where we're about to go eat brunch, which is gonna be delicious. Um, I think the only thing that I'm planning on doing that is kind of like far from this area is um, going to see Martinez uh, later today. So I think we're gonna Uber <laughs> because A, we wanna save our legs for tomorrow. Steph's running the half. Um, so neither of us wanna walk all that far. Um, and then B, it's also raining. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this is a, a really cool area. I'll put the information of where I stayed down in the description. So if you come out to this uh, race, you can, you know, maybe book a, a space in this building. It is through Airbnb. Um, and it is one of the more, more affordable options, especially for like a solo traveler who has to stay for a couple of nights. Like I'm not local where I can just come in and run or come in and stay one night. I do have to stay a couple of nights. So I have to make this kind of like a big deal. <laughs> um, like I have to come to the expo the day before. Um, I, theoretically, I could have flown in today and flown out tomorrow, but you know, <laughs> that's how I used to do my states and I, I still am open to doing that kind of stuff, but I do like to have a little bit of downtime um, to, you know, settle myself <laughs> and not have to, um, you know, run to the airport. I've done it many times before, but running to the airport right after you finish a marathon isn't the funnest thing in the world. I will say that. Yeah, here's my little apartment <laughs> in Detroit, right in the downtown area. And it's gonna be nice to be so close to the start finish line tomorrow, that's for sure. <laughs> going to get brunch and seeing Martinez uh, speak, which was cool. We got to actually meet him after he spoke, which was fun. Uh, so it was just a really fantastic day. Um, but now it's 4.30 already, which is wild. <laughs> so trying to unwind a little bit. I just ordered some groceries, which should be heading my way in the next hour or so. So I thought I'd chat with you and show you what I got at the expo today. So first and foremost, let's talk about what came in the race packet. So you do get your gear bag when you pick up your bib. Um, and so here's my bib for tomorrow. I'm number 850. I'm in Corral E and the race tomorrow starts at 7am. So it's going to be an early morning. Um, but this is my bib. Super exciting. It looks like it comes with a gear tag. Um, 
and we got blue for the marathon. I feel like most marathons that I run were, were the blue team. <laughs> also in your gear bag, you do get a race program. So this has all the information that you need. It's kind of printed like a newspaper, um, but this is all of the race info. So I'm gonna take a look through this just to make sure I understand everything that we're doing tomorrow. Looking forward to that. You get a sticker of the distance that you're running, which is cool. I was actually planning or looking at buying a sticker, but I stopped myself from buying an additional 26.2 Detroit sticker because I got one right here. You do get a Detroit buff, which is so exciting. Um, this will be nice to wear as a headband or a neck gaiter when it gets cold out. And then here is the race shirt. It is a long sleeve blue race shirt and it has the logo right there in the front and then in the back you have the logo again um if you are running the half marathon you get a 13.1 me and steph looked at our shirts and they're pretty much the same except for the back where mine says 26.2 hers says 13.1 so i assume all of the race shirts are this blue with the only difference being um the numbers here on the bottom and then you also get your pins at the bottom of the bag um, but yeah, that's what you get just for signing up, which is really cool. So it's a good uh, load of swag. And then the other items of swag that I purchased were uh, this headband, this junk headband. It says Detroit and then it has the Canadian flag and the American flag right on there. I think I might wear this tomorrow. I know nothing new on race day, but we'll see. <laughs> I think this is really cool to wear. Um, so I might wear this tomorrow. We'll. It'll be a, a game time decision. I gotta think about it for a couple minutes. I also got this tank top, which is really cool. It's this nice, like, kind of burnt red, um, and it has Detroit right there on the front. I really like this uh, logo. The lettering is really cool. Um, and all of their merch is New Balance. All of their, like, apparel is New Balance. And I think New Balance does such a great job with race merch every year. They're the folks who do the New York City Marathon merch and their merch is always fantastic. There are so many cool like fleece jackets that I was very interested in, but I was like, ah, I'm not gonna, I have a million other fleece jackets. I don't need another one, but they were really nice. So I might like go on the New Balance website and get an unbranded one if they have the same uh, styles out there, but I just really love those jackets. But um, I did want to get a shirt. So I got myself this tank top, which I know I'll get a lot of wear out of especially in the hot summer months. And then the other piece of official race merch was this magnet. It says underwater mile, the world's only underwater mile. And this refers to the mile where we are running under the Detroit River in the tunnel as we are coming from Canada to the United States, coming back into the US. So I wanted to get this. Um, I really wanted, there was a hoodie that had this logo on it and I really wanted that hoodie but apparently they sold really, really quickly and they only had smalls and extra smalls left. That wouldn't fit very comfortably on me, so I didn't get one of those, um, but I did get this magnet, which is really cool. So I'll throw this on the fridge. I then got um, a Slow AF Run Club hat um, from Martinez's Talk, and it is so cute. I love the Slow AF um, design. Uh, it has little turtles and it's like paisley and on the bottom it also says slow AF run club so I'm excited to wear this one out and about on my runs and then I got some uh, nutrition I got um, some new noon flavors we've had watermelon before I just bought some from our marathon sports location but they also had fruit punch there that we haven't tried yet. So I got those as well. Um, me and Brett really love noons and we've been trying to experiment with new flavors. So we're gonna share these. Uh, Steph then found Guroctane Cold Brew, which I believe Breezy said she likes these. Um, and I am interested in trying these. So I'm gonna give these a shot. So I got two of those. And then as you were entering the expo, they were giving out Cliff Blocks. Um, I know I like the Cliff Block watermelon, so I just grabbed a, a sleeve of those. Um, I think the only other flavor they were giving out was the Mountain Berry flavor, which I don't think I like that much. And then I got a running sticker, uh, the Running Lab, which I think is like their like running store here in this area, located in Brighton, Michigan. Really fun day, really successful expo trip 
big haul of things that I brought home. Um, maybe spent a little bit more money than I was expecting to, but um, I really love everything that I purchased today. Um, and it's gonna be good memories for future. So like I said, I am just taking it easy now and I'm going to wait for my groceries to arrive. And then once they do, I'll start cooking myself some dinner probably uh, stretch out a little bit, uh, make sure I'm hydrating, do my flat runner, etc. cetera. Um, so it's gonna be a nice chill night, but I'll keep you posted, especially when I get my flat runner together. So I'll show you what I'm wearing. So see you in a little bit. All right, grocery haul. Um, so I got some nanners. So it's always good to have on hand during a race weekend. A little snacky. <laughs> um, I got uh, some King's Hawaiian rolls, some eggs, and some cheese, which I figured I could do for breakfast in the morning. Um, and then I also got these kind bars, which I've been really liking. Um, so those can also be for breakfast. Um, and then for dinner tonight, I'm gonna make some pasta, some ground turkey. I got some red Swiss and um, some spinach. So, and I can use some of these ingredients tomorrow too. Um, so I didn't want to get too much, uh, but I wanted to cook. And this was cheaper than figuring out to-go meals or takeout meals. <laughs> so got my groceries. And then in addition to this as a snacky, I also got myself some ice cream. <laughs> Yum. So I'm gonna cook dinner and get some food in my belly as I'm really hungry. I haven't had anything to eat. Well, I've had some snacks, snack queen, um, but I haven't had like a meal since we ate brunch a few hours ago, like a lot of hours ago. So let's eat some dinner. Let's get some carbs and some protein happening. <laughs> so I have something to burn off tomorrow morning during the marathon. All right, I got my dinner made. We got bow ties, some meat sauce, some spinach. Got water going. Watching New Girl. <laughs> okay, food is consumed. I had two plates. So hopefully that is a good start to fueling. Um, but I wanted to show you my flat runner before I go to bed. This will probably be my last clip, um, but I want to show you what I'm wearing tomorrow. So because I'm here with Bib Brave, I'm wearing my Bib Brave shirt. I've got my bib pinned. Uh, we do have to bring our passports with us. I think I mentioned this before, but I have my passport case, so I'll throw that in there. Um, and then I have my Pro Compression socks. Uh, I'm doing black Fabletic shorts. I have my blue Ghost 15s. Uh, up top, I am going to wear the Detroit headband that I got because why not? Um, and then I have my Nathan belt. In my Nathan belt, I will have noon. So I'll have the Watermelon Burst Energy uh, noon. So these ones have caffeine in them. And then I have my goose. I'm bringing six with me. And then I have uh, electrolyte shoes. So I'll put them in this bag and put them in here. And then additional things, I'll bring my GoPro, um, my Gym Boss, and my Aftershocks. And then over here we have my Garmin charging up and getting ready for the morning. So planning on wearing a black long sleeve shirt underneath because it will likely get very chilly in the morning. Um, it's been kind of chilly. It's a little windy. I don't think it's going to get above like 55 uh, while I'm running. So black long sleeve shirt as well. And that's going to be my race outfit for the Detroit Free Press Marathon, which is really exciting. So it's about 8 p.m. Um, basically what I'm gonna do for the rest of the evening is I'm going to do a stretch. I'm going to use the Theragun on my legs and my hips, etc. cetera. You're gonna do that. All of my electronics that I need for tomorrow are pretty much charged. And yeah, I think I'm pretty much ready for tomorrow. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do low key stuff for the rest of the night. 
uh, do some journaling, do some reading, and then try to wind down and fall asleep <laughs> because I do have to get up early. Um, the race is at seven. I'd like to get over to the start around six or 6.15. So I'd like to leave my Airbnb by like 5.55 or so. So back that up. Uh, probably wake up around five or 4.45 so I can get up, I can change, I can cook myself some breakfast and get myself out the door. So. Got an early morning tomorrow, got a lot of miles to run tomorrow, but I'm very excited, feeling ready, feeling about as ready as I can be, um, but it's gonna be a good day tomorrow. I took a peek at the forecast. It looks like it's gonna be a dry day, and it looks like there's potential for some sunlight peeking out um, in the middle of the race, so we'll see how it goes. But I will see you guys in the morning, ready for state number 26, woo! Good morning, everybody. Happy race day. In my, my race gear, got my new headband on. I know they say nothing new on race day, but I'm doing something new on race day. <laughs> so I'm just up and uh, cooking breakfast. I'm making myself a couple of little sliders with some cheese and eggs. It is about 5.20 a.m. So we are about an hour and a half, about an hour and 40 minutes from start time. So I'm gonna have these sliders now once they cook. And then I'm gonna have this banana and um, one of the kind bars that I got. So I'm gonna get that out that out, um, but I'll bring those with me over to the start line. I'll eat them while I'm walking over there. Um, and yeah, it's race day. I'm feeling good. Um, always a little bit nervous. This is my 28th marathon, which is crazy. Um, and I still get nervous every single time <laughs> just cause, uh, there's just no way to predict how a marathon's gonna go because it's just so long. <laughs> it's so much exertion and effort um, and like anything could be a problem. <laughs> so like your legs can start hurting, your stomach can start hurting. It's it's a, just a long period of time to um, be running. So <laughs> I just am nervous. You never know. Um, what the outcome is going to be, but we're going to go, we're going to have a good time. Weather's looking, actually I haven't looked at the weather, but last night the weather was looking to be pretty favorable today. Um, but we'll see just how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm awake. I'm dressed. I got my bib on. I'm cooking eggs. We're going to have a good day. So, um, I'll keep you posted throughout the day. We're going to walk over here in just a bit. Exciting stuff. Okay, here is my gourmet pre-marathon meal. So I got three little sliders and then I'm gonna chug this noon. That's still kind of effervescing, but food. <laughs>
going to Canada. Let's go. When you get down along the waterfront today, watch out for the polar bears. It is that season. The polar bears are out. <laughs> you just got to keep in front of them. Good morning.
I am back home, clearly, and I wanted to hop on here and wrap up my experience at the Detroit Free Press Marathon because it was a pretty stellar day and I kind of wanted to talk through everything with y'all. So the Detroit Free Press Marathon started at 7 a.m. There were a few different waves. I was in Corral E, which was wave three. So I think they were sending out two corrals at a time every 10 minutes or so. So I started around 7.20 a.m. Um, it was really cold <laughs> waiting in the corrals, um, but we eventually got to the start and we got going right away. And I was using my gym boss the entire time. I think I talked about this a little bit before the race, um, but I did my 130 run, 30 second walk intervals uh, the whole time, which was really, really stellar, worked really well for me. And I think I'm gonna stick to those for a little while because they seem to be working really well for me specifically for longer runs. The start of the race is really cool because it's basically you head right to the bridge, Ambassador Bridge, to head over the border into Canada. So you don't have to run too far to get to like the, the highlight of this race, which is crossing over into Canada. I was very intrigued to see how the border crossing would work. Um, I think I've talked about this a little bit before, but they collected everybody's uh, passport information if you were planning to do the international half or the international full marathon, and you had to have a valid passport to even register for the race. Um, they cut off the registration for the race uh, a month before the race weekend, and I assume what happens from there is they probably send all of the information over to both sides of the border um, so they can review uh, the folks who are going to be crossing into the, the country and back. Um, and if there's any issues, they can take care of it ahead of time. You are required to carry your passport with you, which I was very nervous to do. But one thing that uh, Steph was telling me about was to, um, in order to make sure you don't drop your passport, that was like my big fear is I'm, I was gonna go for a gel and it was gonna pop out of my, my belt and I wasn't even going to like realize it was gone until it was way too late. Um, so one tip that she shared with me was put your passport in a Ziploc bag and then pin the Ziploc bag like inside of your um, belt, your hydration bag, wherever it is that you're storing it so that it can't just like accidentally fall out. So that's what I did um, and it worked fine. I didn't, it didn't move the entire time and I went in and I got gels and salt tabs and so many different things out of my belt this, the entire race. So worked really well. Highly recommend if you have to carry important documents with you, <laughs> like a passport, try to pin it into your belt or whatever it is you're carrying with you. Luckily, I didn't get stopped. I didn't have to um, show any documentation or anything like that. I didn't see anybody get stopped um, at the border. Stephanie told me that she did see somebody get uh, pulled over because I think of it was like a bag they were carrying or a hydration ba bag they were carrying, but I didn't see anybody get uh, stopped by Border Patrol. But on both sides of the border, there were tons of border agents just watching the runners. Um, and the big thing that the race has you do is keeping your bib and your number visible in front of you um, on your body. So that's what they're looking for is they're looking for the red and the blue bibs because those are the ones that are permitted to go across. Those are the ones who provided passport information um, to you know get their bibs and uh, to register for the race. So I heard a bunch of times border agents being like, um, show your number, show your number, make sure like if you had layers on, you had to take the layers off so that your number was showing. And that was basically served as your passport to cross the border. That happened on both sides. Um, when you're entering into the Canada and when you're entering back into the United States, they wanted to see your bibs. So really easy. Otherwise, I, like I said, I didn't see anybody get stopped. I'm, I'm assuming some people probably did get stopped just to like either check a hydration bag like Stephanie said that she saw, or um, if their bib wasn't visible, they, they would have you show your bib. Um, so very, very seamless. I'm very impressed that they were able to do that um, and to have so many people entering in and out of the country uh, so quickly. The other thing I noticed is that there was a timing mat at 2.5 miles, which is when you kind of enter into the area um, to cross over the bridge into Canada. 
Um, so there's a timing mat there, and then there was a timing mat at mile seven, which is when you would enter into the tunnel to go back into the United States. So I think they will probably check those two timing mats to make sure that the same number of people came in to Canada and the same number of people exited into the United States. And if there was an issue, they'd probably follow up after that. So not only do they have border agents checking bibs and everything like that and stopping people if necessary, but they also have like the timing mats so they know who is entering and exiting Canada. So everything went really smooth. Um, I will say that the crowds in Windsor, which is the city in Canada that you run through for this race, really, really showed up. They were probably the most energetic, excited crowds <laughs> out of the entire course. They really kind of show up and make you feel really welcome. They're really excited to have the runners there. Um, and I think like all the neighbors like came out and cheered everybody on. So it's just a really lovely experience. They were just so friendly. Um, and <laughs> I, I really enjoyed my time running through Canada. It's only, so I think you officially like get off the bridge and like into the actual town of Windsor at mile four and then you exit at mile seven and go into the tunnel at mile seven. So it's really three miles <laughs> that you're running through Windsor. Um, but everybody, like it was nonstop crowds the entire time. So many good signs, so many people dressed up in costumes and giving high fives and everything like that. So it was just really, really lovely. And then we crossed back into the US. Um, we ran through uh, downtown Detroit for a little bit. And then around mile, I think it was around mile either 10 or 11, we kind of split from the half marathon. What, from the split to about mile, maybe like 15, 14 or 15 or so, it was pretty quiet. We went through a bunch of residential neighborhoods, but there were still people out and about and there were still a couple of points where people were playing music. And um, I will say like the volunteers definitely at the water stations were so, so friendly and energetic at every single volunteer stop. I feel like this race is the race where I heard my name called the most. <laughs> like, and I've run two world majors. Um, I've run a lot of really big races. And this race, uh, each bib has like your name printed on it or whatever it is that you want printed on it. And the people in, that were spectating and definitely the volunteers were just like always screaming my name and everybody else's names and saying, good job, good job, go Riley. You're doing amazing, Riley. Like it, it was just so encouraging. <laughs> so I loved the people that were out there spectating and volunteering and just being so friendly and kind. Um, so that's just one thing that I, I noticed that was really cool about the Detroit Free Press Marathon is that the spectators and the volunteers were just like extra, extra friendly and nice. I think around mile like 12 or 13 or so, my left leg kind of started to act up. So I did take some ibuprofen to kind of manage that and just kept rolling through. I was also playing a little bit of leapfrog at this point with the five hour pace group. Um, and while I didn't necessarily have any time goals, it was nice to be like in sight of the five hour pace group. I was still doing my intervals and like trying to, you know, stay on top of my intervals because I knew like at that point it was mile 13, 14, I still had a lot of race left to run. So I was still working on my intervals. I don't know when it happened, but eventually like I passed them and I lost them. So I was like, I'm ahead of the five hour pace group. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. And I'm feeling like pretty okay. Like outside of like my left leg situation, which I've been dealing with for a long time, as you guys know, um, I was feeling pretty good and I was kind of cruising along and just doing my intervals and trying to enjoy myself as best as I can. Between miles like 16 and 18 or so, we were getting like a ton of really cool street art. Um, Detroit in particular has a lot of really incredible um, murals all throughout the city. Like they really kind of embrace uh, their artistic scene and there are so many really breathtaking murals all around the city and uh, this section of the course really really showed up in that way um, and it was so cool. Between miles, I think it was miles 17 and 18, we were on this bike path and it went under a bunch of bridges and I think I took some video but under each bridge was this like beautiful mural <laughs> like, and it, we went under a couple of them which was really really beautiful and cool and it was um, a good way to kind of pass 
the miles and like taking a look at all of these wonderful um, pieces of art. Um, so that was one thing that I did notice about Detroit during my time there is just there is so much art everywhere and I loved that. I loved that so much. Miles 19 and 20 were kind of just kind of going down this uh, one stretch of road where you, you did see people coming back that were like at mile 24 and uh, <laughs> that's always a little disheartening when you can like see the people who are almost done and just realizing how far away you are from being at that same point. Um, so I try not to think too much about it. Um, we were getting some uh, headwinds at this point. So like I said, I was just trying to chip away doing my intervals. Um, and then we kind of went into a, again, another residential area. I wasn't really like, my stomach was kind of like giving me some problems at this point. Um, so I tried to just push through. Um, and then after a couple of miles, it subsided, which was, <laughs> I was very happy about. <laughs> Um, I will say, like, I've, I've mentioned this, I think I've mentioned this before, I don't know if I've mentioned it in a video, but I know I've had this thought before, is that I would much rather have, like, physical pain in, like, my legs or something like that, like, injury pain, not necessarily a full-blown injury, but, like, that kind of pain, I'd rather have, like, sore legs, sore muscles, etc., than have a upset stomach <laughs> during a marathon. And I think this came from when I did the Kansas City Marathon a few years ago, but I ran that entire race feeling so nauseous and it was just not a good time. So I am glad that my stomach like issues kind of subsided um, after that point. Running through these more residential neighborhoods, um, it was okay, uh, it was quiet, so I was just trying to like jam to my tunes as I was doing my intervals, but there were several houses throughout that stretch where it was just like a full-blown front yard party, just like a bunch of neighbors all around, everybody's cooking, they had like a bunch of seats facing the, the race, everybody's cheering having a great time blasting music and I'm like this is the way to do it like if you're trapped in your house for a marathon like make an event of it um so I was very like excited about those folks uh who were um still cheering on the folks that were like at that point I think it was maybe like four hours into the marathon so they're still cheering for us which was uh, so fantastic at mile 22 in particular there was folks handing out jelly beans those jelly beans saved my life. They, <laughs> I was like, this is exactly what I needed. Um, so <laughs> thank you to the folks handing out jelly beans at mile 22. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> at this point, I was on the stretch heading back towards the finish line and it had in the back of my head, like at this point I was still ahead of the five hour pace group. Um, I think I started before the five hour pace group started so if I had stuck with them I wouldn't have made a five hour time but when I got to about mile 24 I realized that sub five hours was in striking distance for me <laughs> and I was like I had run this whole race just like not really thinking about that um it was in the back of my mind it's always in the back of my mind but like until I got to mile 24 that's when I kind of let myself think like oh this could happen like I could hit a sub five right now I still did my run walk intervals during mile 24 and when I got to mile 25 that's when I was like it's gonna be close but I think I can pull this sub five off because I think when I hit mile 25 I was at like four hours and 45 minutes or something like that or 40 so it was really really close so I was like if I want to make sub five I cannot walk anymore. <laughs> so I decided I was like, I'm not doing my intervals anymore. I'm just gonna run. We're gonna see what happens. Um, kept running, kept running. Um, we hit mile 26 and we do a turn and I still don't see the finish line and I'm still going, I'm still pushing so hard. And then I start hearing the announcer at the finish line and I still am pushing so, so hard. I turn, I see the finish line and I book it. <laughs> I'm just like not like in so much pain. I'm like just trying to book it as hard as I can in this moment. And I end up getting a sub five hour marathon for the second time in my life. I ran a 4.59.25 marathon and I am just so like, blown away at the fact that I did that. 
Um, and I'm so proud of myself for being able to do that because I, again, I wasn't expecting it and I am just so proud of myself for, for pulling that off. Um, and I think I had just such a fantastic day, such a fantastic race. And I am, like I said, just so proud of myself. I, I'm feeling really, really good about how that race went. I, I couldn't have asked for a better day, honestly. <laughs> so here is my Detroit Free Press Marathon medal. This guy is nice and big. It's about the size of my palm, bigger than my palm. And this is like a hefty boy, look how thick that thing is. Um, and on it, we have the, the man in the middle is the statue, it's called the Spirit of Detroit. And then in the background, you'll see that's Ambassador Bridge. That's the bridge that you cross over to get into Canada. And this is Detroit 26.2. Every distance has this medal, um, but the distance, of course, is different. Um, I'm going to take it off to show you a little bit more. So on the back, you can see um, this is the, like the title sponsor of the marathon, marathon finisher, and then October 15th, 2023. And then the ribbon, I think they use this ribbon every year, but I, as they should because it's such a cool part of the race, an iconic part of the race. But the ribbon is one side is the US flag and the other side is the Canadian flag. And then on the back, so this is the part that's like on the back of my neck is a 26.2 with the logo of the race. So yeah, here is the old trusty metal. <laughs> I'm really, really excited for this. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how to explain like how excited I am for how I performed, uh, on Sunday and, um, just the fact that I was able to pull off a sub five hour marathon for the second time. The other cool thing that I didn't even mention, but I ran for the first time ever, I'm pretty sure. I'll have to, I'm like, I don't know, like for a fact, cause I've run so many marathons at this point, but I'm pretty sure for the first time ever. I ran a negative split for the marathon. And what that means is that my second half of my marathon was faster than my first half of my marathon. I'll put it on the screen, but I think my first half of the marathon was two hours and 32 minutes and some change. And then the second half was two hours and 27 minutes and some change, which is so wild to me. <laughs> I've never done that before. And that is just something that uh, I'm also very, very proud of myself and it kind of shows that these um, intervals really, really do work because I felt like I had gas in the tank um, at the end of the race, which almost never happens. Don't get me wrong, I really kind of put everything out on the course when I realized I had a uh, sub five in striking distance. So like when I crossed the finish line, I felt like I was gonna like collapse pretty much. <laughs> but at the end of the race, like when I hit 24, and hit 25 and realize like I need to like book it if I want to try to get the sub five time. I feel like I had the energy to do that. Um, as little energy as it was, I had the energy to, to go for it um, at the end of the race. So if you haven't already, try intervals. They're incredible. <laughs> Overall, I had a really, really fun time at this marathon. Um, Similar to other marathons that have a half marathon that runs at the same time and on the same course, it's usually the the first half of the race is the most like memorable and iconic part of the race. And that is similar here with the Detroit Free Press Marathon because you, you run into Canada, you run through Windsor, you come back into the US, you're running through downtown Detroit. So it's like you get a lot of like the more fun aspects um, of the race uh, during the first half. Uh, the second half there are some definitely some bright spots as well but I will say the the more like fun part of the race is the the first half where the the half marathon is running with you. So if you are looking into doing either the international half or the international full um, you're gonna have a good time regardless um, but definitely the, the first half <laughs> It's a lot more fun than the second half. That being said, like this, the, the marathon as a whole is a great marathon and that is because you're going through a lot of different parts of the city, you're going through a lot of different neighborhoods, you're seeing a lot of really awesome um, murals and artwork throughout the city. Um, the Like I said, the volunteers and the spectators that watch this race all so, so friendly. Like truly one of the friendliest marathons that I've been a part of. 
um, and I really, really enjoyed that. And the course itself too, flat, flat, flat. There is a very few hills um, and that is really conducive to some good times here and I think that also is a contributing factor to my performance. Um, so definitely if you're looking for maybe a PR race that has some fun features like crossing the border, then check out the Detroit Free Press Marathon because you're probably going to be able to fly. I think there's only like a couple of points of the race where I felt like it's really congested and that's really kind of like the border crossing points, which makes sense because they're, they're trying to make sure that they're not <laughs> losing sight of the runners that are trying to cross the borders. But other than that, you're, you've got a pretty open space and you can kind of really move um, and really, really enjoyed that. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this vlog. State number 26, done. We're 52% of the way through the country. That's wild. <laughs> um, Michigan, was fantastic really enjoyed my time in detroit really enjoyed my time at this race definitely would recommend this race both the half and the full um i i really enjoyed myself so i definitely hope that if you're looking for a michigan race that you consider the detroit free press marathon um and let me know if you have any questions about the race anyway me and my medal we're gonna go we hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye.